Welcome back to Transplants Livology. We're going to go right into our next question. Um, this next question is coming from a, a young lady. We're not sure um, what state and city, um, but it's a follow-up question. She had sent in a question previously just discussing uh, their relationship and pretty much that it had came to an end. They were still sharing a bedroom, but they had things in the middle where they wouldn't, um, you know, had a be, child sleep in the middle. It was a child sleep in the middle. Things. Well, I, I, baby, I can't remember. But they had um, a child sleeping in the middle. Well, um, I doubt it was the child that was in the middle at this time. But they were still sleeping in the same bed, and one thing led to another. They um, did their thing, and um, the stud of the relationship got up as if nothing happened. And um, they both kind of just moved on, carry on, like, you know, hey, we didn't even just did it. Um well, this but young lady, they had, broken up. they had broken up, but they still doing it, you know, friends with benefits. But the fam felt like she's gotten punked now. She did feel like she got punked. Uh, but now um, the fam is dealing with a situation in that um, she wants to do more. She wants to do more to the stud. She wants to be able to do and touch and, you know, lickety lick, splitty split, I don't know. And um, the, the, her partner is not having it as often as she, as she would like. Uh, she used to be the dominant person in a relationship prior to this one that's ending. And um, it's very difficult for her to be in this position of not being dominant in the bedroom still. So she poses this question. How do you come to a happy medium um, in a situation like this just in case she finds herself in another stud with another stud who is still um, a touch-me-not? And how are you supposed to bring this kind of discussion up and how much talk should you have, you know, especially since you're talking about sex? Okay, well, um, again, because this has a lot to do with the touch me not, mm. you, you got to be able to have a conversation with your partner or the person you're sleeping with so you guys would know what you both like, what you, what you both don't like, and what you both can be halfway on. Um, because from what I'm, what we're reading here, you, you're, you're the one getting pleased, but you feel like you want to please her more and she's not allowing you to. And now you want to know because you're, you do feel like your relationship is still over and you feel like you, you know, being punked by, you know, still having sex with her, even though you, you guys are no longer together. So you want to know that before you move on to the next relationship, how do you handle it? Um, I guess that's what this rea reality show, because that's really what it is. Um, that's what this show is it's all real. about, you know, real, learning how to have conversation, communication when it comes down to love and relationships, period. Right. You shouldn't be able to, you shouldn't have to hold anything back. If, you, if you're thinking it, you should be able to say it. Yeah. Um, sometimes we say how it comes out may be a little hurtful, but if you have to write it down on paper because you may feel like you may come across wrong or hurting somebody's feelings, write it. Um, but, I, but you have to be able to say your feelings and your emotions and how you're feeling. Because if you if it's more that you want to do or want to be done, your partner cannot read your mind. True. And then if they're to the point where they're telling you no, no, no to everything you want to do, you might need to re reevaluate who you're with. Right. I say it all the time. Um, you're not going to be happy. You're going to always have that issue come up when it comes to sex and in the bedroom because you feel like I want to tell her what I want to do. I want to tell her what I want more of, but I know she's going to shoot it down. Mm -hmm. That's a problem. So you got to find the balance somewhere to be able to have these conversations with your husband, your wife, your your girlfriend, your lesbian lover, whatever you want to call these people. You got to be able to have that open line of communication mm -hmm. because if it's something more you want, you have to talk about it. So now you're saying you're moving out of this relationship and you're going to eventually transition into another one. So you want to get yourself prepared mm -hmm. before you go into the next relationship with this new stud or whomever it may be. You go in knowing this is what I want. Right. This is what I will tolerate. This is what I'm not going to tolerate. And this is what I work on tolerating. So just have, I mean, you got to have the open line, open line of communication to be able to voice how you feel and don't hold it back. Feelings may get hurt or they may have an understanding. You never know. You can't know until you say it. That's true. So you got to, you got to find, you got that, you have to find that outlet somewhere. Right. That's true. I mean, I agree. I agree with what my baby said. Also, um, you you said um, that you want to know what what you can do moving moving forward, and it is a touchy subject when it comes to studs. I'm not gonna lie, it yeah. is. It's a very touchy subject, but you as the feminine one needs to also reassure 
and make the um, the stud feel comfortable and to a point where they can trust you. Yeah. And I remember when uh, my baby and I first when we when we talked, not when we first talked about it. You know, she couldn't understand why why you won't let me do that. You know, and finally I said, you know what? I went for years not letting folks doing things that they wanted to because I didn't trust them. Because one thing I know and I've heard with my ears yeah. is femmes or feminine women we'll after go blast. they go back and blast the studs. Man, you should have seen how that okay. And y'all only do it after y'all done broke up. Yeah. The stud needs to be able to trust you when they're with you and when they're not with you. Yeah. Because being intimate with someone is a personal connection. Yeah. It's not for anyone else to know. And you know, most folks will know who knows me. I don't go tell them, well, my baby, it ain't none of their business. It's none of their business. You know what I'm saying? The, the most they would get out of me, treat, yup, I got some, I sure did, and it was good. They don't need to know what position. They don't need to know how many times she, you know, mm, they, don't, they don't need to know none of that. It's none of their business. So as a stud, we need to feel comfortable that if we do let our guards down and allow you to you live head, in the and, you're going to keep it right there in the bedroom between you and and them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's nobody else's business. So I really think a lot of the time femmes don't feminine ones don't get their ways because then femmes don't the studs don't trust y'all. Yeah. And they that don't. is true. You know, a lot of femmes after they break up with their studs, you know, because I've heard it before that some femmes like, Oh, he acting like he all hard and I had his legs up in the air. And, and I saw it on my space. I yeah. saw it on Facebook. Y'all crazy. Man. So come on. You got you got to build that real that serious, serious trust factor up. And the crazy thing to let that guard down. They get back together after all that blasting. Well, yeah. That's nonsense, man. You shouldn't do that. One thing I know is regardless of what happens, you don't go blasting the person that you with or yeah. were with. Yeah. Because when if you it's were over, with them, it's over. And that's what what you guys did in the bedroom is still nobody else's business. Well, ask them another way. I think that's just real private. I mean, say they didn't keep the room clean or something. Or something simple. They kept their clothes all over the floor. But don't. But what happens My in the bedroom? Blast. Really, don't blast that. Don't blast I that. think that's really, really sacred and private. Gosh. And you shouldn't want to, you know, put nobody on blast. I don't care what you guys broke up for. That's true. Um, so I guess that that does come up, come come, you know, to part with the stud part of it that you got to build that trust factor up to know that they're comfortable and secure with you not taking whatever y'all do in the bedroom outside the bedroom. That's true. That may that really may be a lot of the studs issue from not letting women, the feminine women, do more things that they want to do because they feel like, man, if I let her do this, she gonna go and tell her friends. That's true. So you got you got to kind of really build that that real comfort level up and trust them. So. That's true. We hope we helped you on that one. She also asked, you know, how much talking should you have? There should never end. There should be no limitation on talking that should about be a sex. Continuous thing. You should be able to talk about sex every day, no, all like day, no matter what. It, no matter what it is, if, no matter what kind of questions come up, ask. I don't think no question is too out of the box or out of the norm for you to talk about when it comes to sex. Nah, who don't like talking about it? Now, she the bang bang boom boom. You gotta keep just talking. That's how you keep it fresh. Talk about it. Great segue to our next question, which is subject sex. (laughs) It says, first, let me say I love you all show and you all. I just started watching it and love it. My question is, how can you keep the passion alive or bring it back? And how can you keep your partner wanting more and wanting and what keep you and your wife Wanting more. Oh, they asking what keep us wanting more. She gonna be your wife. Keep you and your wife. Just say, for instance, you're reading it. I'm your wife. Jeez. Okay. Because I don't know how, how to know you I was keep gonna be reading your it. partner wanting more. What keep you and your wife wanting more? Go. I've been with my wife for five years, going on six in March, and our love is on the rocks. Love life. Read mm-hmm. all the words, baby. Our love life is on the rocks. I want to know how can I keep her happy in the bedroom. And what can I do to keep her coming back, back for, for more? more? I don't even know what turns her on after five years. I guess that's a start. I just really need some help or advice about that. Thank you and keep doing what y'all do. It's a wonderful thing. I enjoy every moment of it. Your fan from Rochester, New York. Big All ups right. from The Rock. New York. New York. I used to live close. I used to live in Syracuse, man. The Rock is right around the corner, so shout-outs to The Rock. 
Um, wow, spicing it up. We love talking about this. Okay, now, let me let me take the floor for Go a ahead, second. Baby, take it. Um, you've been with your partner for five years. First, you said, you know, what can you do to keep the passion alive or bring it back? Let me go there first. To keep the passion alive or bring it back. It It's unfortunate that sometime in every relationship, it mm -hmm. will die down. Mm -hmm. However, don't let that flame burn out completely, ever. Mm -hmm. Because then it really is hard to rekindle. And then someone may be looking elsewhere. However, how do you keep the passion alive? I think that's the easiest part of your entire question. Um, if you've been with her for five years, you should already know everything she likes. The things that make her smile, the things that make her glow, the things that make her, you know, blush. Anything that you remember that makes her smile, blush, giggle, act a little like the teenager, teenager, you know, little girly, girly, whatever, <laughs> do it. Because those things to me are bringing that passion back from when you first met. It could, you could take it back to when you guys first started dating. Do some of the things you did when you first started dating her. I mean, because it's been five years now going on six. I'm sure some things you did in year one that you're not doing in year five. Think back to things that you did with your partner and rekindle those things to bring that passion back. I think that's the easiest part of this question that you sent in. The passion, keeping the passion alive. The only person knows that is you because you've been with her that long. Um, we really couldn't tell you exactly verbatim what to go do go pick up this go pick up that no 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 nah. you know from day one what you did to get her and i always say what you did to get her that's what you need to do to keep her so just rekindle some of that you know that old passion that you did you know when y'all was in y'all dating stages and all you know happy and giddy just bring that back um you said uh <laughs> what keep you and your wife wanting more well you said that because trey read it so i'm trey's wife i wouldn't call it you know, um, let me just pause for, pause for a second. Some um, lesbian couples call their mates, even looking like a stud, wife. Unfortunately, I don't. And yeah, we all have a preference. Right. I feel like Trey give me that manly look. And Lord knows I don't want a man. He gives me that dominant, manly, secure look. And that I call him Trey. I call Trey he. Right. So in Atlanta, a lot of other states, a lot of people do that. Um, I say he. I don't say she. Every blue moon, she will come out, but it it really, really Once come a out. Month, so right. I say he, and I will say my man and my my baby, and I'm the wife. <laughs> so that to answer that part, I'm the wife. So you were asking, what do you do to keep you and your wife wanting more? Um, because the 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 fire stays lit in our home and in our bedroom. I, we always want more. I know I do. I'm I'm speaking for self. I always want more because number one, he always turns me on. He, he just gives me a look, and I'm turned on. Just a kiss turns me on. Stop, babe. Um, a hug, anything, just my baby touching me, rubbing my back, kissing my back. All those things keep me wanting more because those are things that Trey did in the beginning and those things that Trey know that I love. So Trey already automatically know that my baby, know, she love when I rub her back and she love when I kiss her back. And he know I'm going to make a gesture. So those things that my baby already know, just like I said, your partner already know. And you already know things that you've done before that you need to keep doing to make that fire stay. So that's easy for us. We're going to have to come back in another segment and finish some of this, but I'm going to let you go ahead and get your little piece in. Baby. Get I can't your get piece. It. My, my piece is not little, and when oh. I come back, I'll get my big piece in. Okay. Sorry. Right. Peace. <laughs>